Joining me now, former Florida Congressman, he is retired Lieutenant Colonel Allen West here in the studio. Colonel, so it's good to see you. I'm so glad you're here. So here. we have the former acting head of the CIA, Mike mm -hmm. Morrell, and you've said this too, NSA Director James Clapper, the former head, um, saying there's no proof there's any collusion. Did you see any of that kind of uh, coverage or any talk of that in the hearings today? Well, no. Absolutely not, and I think when you looked at that uh, hearing, that, and I watched the whole thing, the Democrats definitely came in with a, an idea that they want to get across and a message they want to get across. And it's very interesting because we know that when President Obama was sitting okay, there. Okay, sorry, uh, Colonel, uh, let's check his mic again. We're having yeah. trouble with the Colonel's mic. You You're good? so powerful, you knock the, knock the mic out. Um, oh. So what we're dealing with right now are the Comey uh, FBI hearings yeah. today. Uh, and the NSA director, Mike Rogers, was there as well. Uh, again, there was no proof offered at this hearing that there was actual collusion between the Trump campaign and, the, and Russia. And the Trump voter out there is saying, you know what, we've had it. The FBI is saying, we started this investigation in July, still no proof offered, Colonel, right? No, there's no proof offered. And like you say, you go back and you talk about Mike Morrell, you talk about James Clapper, the former head of the Director of National Intelligence, and they're saying there is no collusion there. But the thing that I find is this hypocrisy. No one said anything when Barack Obama had campaign operatives that went to Israel and they worked against Prime Minister Netanyahu in his re-election. No one said anything about the collusion when Barack Obama sat and said, after my re-election, I'll have more flexibility. No one said anything when Hillary Clinton was making the deal with Russia on this uranium sale. So, you know, we have to get to the bottom of this. We have to move away from the politicization. But the most important thing they should be focusing on is where are these leaks coming of classified information that is going Going to the New York Times, to the Washington Post, or whomever. Yeah, you're right. You to bring that up. It's interesting because FBI Director Comey said that is a serious crime, mm -hmm. and rightly so. But you know that that ir irony there is that Hillary Clinton was not prosecuted for the same leaks. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we, to your point, uh, John Podesta and his brother Tony Podesta. Uh, reports have indicated that they have worked for investment companies and other firms in Russia. And so th if there's leaks going on with WikiLeaks, could it have been that the Podesta, John Podesta, was emailing and maybe they hacked into his email while he was running the DNC and maybe that's how WikiLeaks or, or Russia, got, rather, let yeah. me back up, the alleged Russia connection, the red, alleged Russia hack got in through Podesta yeah. maybe. Well, absolutely. And there's no doubt about it that we have a cybersecurity issue in the United States of America. Russia, China, North Korea attacking us. And so the real issue is that was John Podesta very secure in his password and protecting his own email yeah. communication? Yeah, we know that, you know, Russia hacked one and a half, allegedly one and a half billion, you know, user accounts at Yahoo. And we've got Russian, Russians arrested there. Let's move on. President Trump heading to Kentucky this hour to talk to the people about making his agenda a reality, including fixing Obamacare and getting the country moving again. The Trump voter sees all else as political rubbernecking and distraction. But Democrat House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi still refuses to help stop the collapse of Obamacare. Have the Democrats offered something that could meet them halfway, meet Republicans halfway, or to deal with some of those well, issues? No, it's not a question of halfway. It's like a little bit pregnant. You either have health care or you don't. You can't say, I'm going to give you all the goodies with none of the uh, responsibility. And that's what the president is saying. What do you think of Nancy Pelosi here? This is the person that said we have to pass the bill in order to find out what is in it. This is the person that criticized the Republicans and saying that they are the reason for the collapse of Obamacare because of the risk corridor, which was basically a bailout for insurance. This thing was going to fall apart. The insurance companies were going to break down because you cannot push all of these new people into the market uh, and they're not going to be able to get compensated for it. And when the Republicans said we can't have an insurance bailout, they knew this was going to happen. Nancy Pelosi is not going to assist. She's not going to come up with any type of solutions whatsoever of a law that was written basically in her office back in 2009, 2010, that they pushed through uh, against all the will of the American people, and now it is falling apart. She should say, you know, let's, let's try to be part of a solution. But I think really, Liz, when you look at this thing, it was meant to collapse right about this time, 2017, and it was a fait accompli. If the Democrats had won the White House, then they could say Obamacare is not working, we can move to a single payer. If it's uh, the Republicans in charge, now guess what? The Republicans are stuck trying to fix the thing that they knew was going to collapse. And it's happening just as you just said. That's mm -hmm. interesting. The president 
Uh, in other news, welcomed Iraqi Prime Minister Abadi to the White House today. President Trump will also host Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi for talks in Washington on April 3rd. So, Colonel, how will this impact the president's approach to the Middle East, these meetings coming up? I think it's very important. One of the things that we saw with the previous administration was that they really leaned more so to Iran. The complete withdrawal of our uh, forces out of Iraq was an incredibly bad strategic decision. And we can go through all of the, the faults and failures and what we have seen and resulting from that, the horrible consequences. When you have someone like a the Prime Minister of Iraq, we need to show that we're going to be standing with them. We need to get rid of the Iranian influence in Iraq, and we need to get rid of that uh, Islamic terrorist influence there as well. Now, having uh, the president of Egypt come in, that's another great ally that was shunned by the Obama administration. If you recall, the Obama administration welcomed in uh, Mohamed Morsi. Okay. All right, Colonel, so, so good to see you. Sorry about the mic problems, but we love having you and love having you in the studio. Come back soon. Absolutely. Next up, talk about a hat trick.